Welcome to my video on major triads. This video is part of a series designed to help musicians, keyboard players and students get into their music. The music will appear in different ways on the screen throughout. However, at the beginning of the video, there will be opportunities to pause and take screenshots of the music used. The video will start with these screenshots and then take each key in turn. Music and chord symbols will be displayed throughout. Okay, welcome. The purpose of this video is triads. How we make them from our scale. How to find the inversions. And how they play into each other. Triads are a most useful tool. We do want to keep it simple today. But they can, can be used in very advanced ways and make great sounds or great progressions as this one. I'm sure you're familiar with it. These um, humble triads when played into each other can produce great songs and if you're into your songwriting or just working out your pop culture, knowing how to find your triads and make your triads will be incredibly useful for you. They can also produce some more sophisticated sounds by moving your bass note. That changes the chord completely, but really, in this hand here, we still just have a B-flat triad. Okay, so how do you make your triads? Well, as you know, we are numbering the degrees of the scale. If you've watched that video, mind. If not, just be aware, we number the degrees of our major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Any major scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And you'll see that more as we go through because we'll give you all 12 keys for these triads. Okay, so all you got to do is take the 1, 3, and the 5, and you have the major triad. You can do that in any key. So let's do it in G. G has. F sharp, but it doesn't affect the triad because we've just got one, three, five, and there's our key, G major. Okay, so if we can get a triad, one, three, and five at any place or any scale, that gives us a lot of chords. But if we play always one, three, and five in our positioning, it's going to sound a bit naff after a while. So we need some variation and we get that through the inversions so you can literally take these notes one three and five of your major scale so that's C at the moment and you can play them in different places here's another C chord that's a more open position voicing or we could do it this way okay so we can spread them around now we're talking about triads we're talking about a close position voicing so we've got one, three, five right next to each other. Well, that's not the only way we need to do that. We can actually take this C here and put it up here. This is another inversion. This is called first inversion. This one is root position. This one is first inversion. And one, three, five. Still C, E, and G. We do that once more. We take the bottom note and put it on the top again and we have second inversion note that it's still one three five four c e g just the inversion in a different place sorry just the notes in a different place creating a different version second inversion so we have root first and second of every key so i'm just going to run those through for you now so as you can actually get in there and copy this here's we're going to go through the sharps and we're going to go in the circle of fifths so we're just going to add one sharp to the key every time we're going to start with g major because we already know c one two three four five six seven eight one three five here's your triad that's your root position triad 
here's your first inversion. Chord one, three, five. Here's your second inversion. One, three, five. G major. Okay, D major. D major has two sharps. The F sharp and the C sharp. The F sharp is going to affect our chord. Three, five. Here we have D major, D, F sharp and A. Put the D on top and you have first inversion. One, three, five. D, F sharp, A. Put the D in the middle or put the F sharp up to the top. And you have one, three, five, second inversion. D major. Now I'm sure you're starting to get this pattern, so I'm going to go a little quicker. Three sharps. A major. Five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five. A major, root position. A, C sharp, and E. First inversion will be when we put the A on top. A, C sharp, and E. One, three, five. And second inversion when we put the C sharp on top. Easier to think of your second inversion as the root note is in the middle. One, three, five. A, second inversion. Okay, next scale, E, four sharps. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five. Notice how much D, A, and E look alike with the sharp in the middle. First inversion, one, three, five, or E, G sharp, B. And second inversion with the E in the middle. One, three, five. Onward, let's go to five sharps, B major. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five. Two sharps in this chord. B, D sharp, F sharp. B, root position. B, D sharp, F sharp, or 1, 3, 5, B major, first inversion. And then B, D sharp, F sharp, same notes all the time, just different order. Second inversion. That's the end of the sharps, we'll now go to the flats. Funnily enough, F is a flat key because it's got a flat key signature, it's got a B flat in it. Our chord, however, will not use it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Five. Just put them in a different order. F on the top, making first inversion. One, three, five. Or F, A, C. And then do one last inversion. A on the top. Root note in the middle. One, three, five. F major. Okay, going on to two flats, slightly different look to the chords because two flats is B flat, starts on a flat note. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five. Probably better fingered with the thumb. But here it is B flat, D, and F. Our root position B flat chord. Put the B flat on top. One, three, five. B flat first inversion. Put the B flat in the middle. One, three, five. B flat second inversion. Next chord, uh, sorry, next scale we're going on to is three flats, E flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, three, five. Is it E flat root position? Put the E flat on top. One, three, five. B flat, G. Oh, I'm sorry. E flat, G, B flat. One, three, five. And then E flat in the middle. One, three, five. E flat, G, B flat. Okay, on to four flats. A flat. 
Position triad D flat F A flat. If you put the D flat on the top, it's first inversion. D flat F A flat. If we put the D flat in the middle, it's second inversion. One three five D flat F A flat. Okay, one last scale to do G flat major. It is sometimes called F sharp as well. Um, there are sometimes what we call enharmonic shifts, whereas G flat and F sharp is the same thing, and you will get chord symbols like that. We'll discuss it later, just be aware that G flat major can also be called F sharp. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 5. 1, 3, and 5, making up G flat or F sharp root position. We'll go this same G flat, B flat, D flat. Put the G flat on top. G flat, B flat, D flat. One, three, five. G flat. First inversion. And the final one, putting the G flat in the middle. One, three, five. G flat. Second inversion. G flat, B flat, D flat. That covers all your triads. If you learn all those, um, you've got a good good chunk of chords going down. Of course, they're all major. We'll talk about minor later. But these chords play really, really well, all beautifully into each other, really. And so once you've learned all the triads and all their inversions, you can make some really good sounds. You can work out your tunes. And you can get good voice leading. Now, we do want to talk about that. Um, how do we choose what triad? Are we going to go which doesn't sound bad but it's not as good as that which is using inversions rather than using the same one all the time. Try and avoid too much root position all the time. My theory behind that really is that root position only provides those types of intervals. You've got here a third and here a minor third thing is it's thirds. When you go out to the inversions, you'll see you've got a bigger gap here, a fourth. We'll talk intervals later, but that's one, two, three, four. It gives more interest to the chord. Same with the second version. A lot of people think the second version's the strongest. I just recommend that you don't play too much in the root position, but use inversions, especially when you can play into each other. How do you make that decision? Well, when you're looking at your chords, and you're going through a tune that someone's written for you, or a tune that's popular at the time, you'll see the root of the chord, you know, a C chord to an F chord to a G chord, well, if it moves in a fourth, change your inversions, so here's a C, and then there's an F, they play into each other really well, and then we're dropping down to a G, which is also moved in a fourth from the C, if they're just moving next door, then do keep the same inversion. Now, of course, these kind of rules, as I call it, the rule of root, um, change according to the artist, because sometimes artists can do really lovely things and break all those rules, though. That's a really lovely line, and it's um, actually just using the same inversion as it moves. Works well, so... Rules are useful, but yeah, break them. Okay, that is our um, 
conclusion to our triad exercise. If you get good at them, learn to do this. I'll put the chart to this on my website. Start down in each place, and then you're ready to get your triads. Watching, I hope you're enjoying your music. I am found at www.pianoteacher.nz.